you know that it's a right move when it is smooth, when you're not pushing it, when you're not trying to make it happen, when you're not trying to force it. If you have the perfect place lined up with the perfect lease lined up and the perfect situation landed on your lap and you're wondering whether or not it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do because it's all perfect. It all lines up for you. It's basically sometimes God just opens up a door and says, hey, let's go. And when a door is open like that, there's no effort because it's already open. You're not trying to pry the door open. You're not trying to jimmy the lock. You're not trying to go through all the keys and figure out which one's going to open a, open a door. It's just like, boom, hey, let's go. Yo, Elliot. Uh, his His ultimate question is, should I be moving out of my parents' home or grind for a few years more to pay off my student debt? Just a few points. Sven is 21, living in the Netherlands. Recently graduated and already have a job with steady income. Uh, his salary is for 36 hours. He could do 40 hours and make a few extra bucks if he wants. In a few weeks, he's going to be starting his own company on the side. Uh, he's going to be really busy. And uh, he goes on to say, though, that he's living with his parents. His gut feeling is that he needs to move out. I've already lived for a year and a half on my own during my stay abroad and really miss having my quote unquote own life. Uh, he says he feels kind of trapped there with his parents. Um, he moved back in because of COVID. He wants to make his own rules. He wants to live on his own terms as a 21 year old man, right? Making his own money. Wants to make his own rules. I can understand that. Uh, the main financial problem is that I won't be able to save money while I rent. So it's either, you know, money goes to savings or it goes to your lifestyle, right? Paying the rent. Um, after he, you know, pays his rent, buys furniture, he'll have a little bit left over for uh, an emergency fund. Uh, and so he says his parents don't mind if he stays home. Uh, he could always come back home. Says the rental period, I guess the lease that he's looking to sign is a year and a half. And, uh, you know, there are some good things about moving into the new part of the city. He says you'll have some social life and you'll be able to work from home. And so there are a lot of really positive things that are associated uh, with moving out. So he says, uh, nothing is final yet. So that's what I would appreciate your opinion on. Should I move out and kind of start my own hero's journey and experience life? Or should I wait for a bit longer and make sure I'm financially stable, paid off my debt before I move? I might be overthinking it, but guess I just need to hear uh, a definite answer from someone else than my parents to shut my mind off to this topic. And I think you're the right person to give me the well needed ass whoop of this kind. So Sven, I'm not going to give you an answer. Uh, I'm going to invite you to allow the answer to be revealed to you, right? A lot of times we want to get the answer up here or we want to hear it. We want somebody to tell us what to do or we want to be able to put two two together and make logical sense of the decision we're going to make. And I know you even said, I want a definite answer. We all do, right? Uh, because it's uneasy to not know. And I think you do know the answer, but I'm not going to verbalize that to you. What I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to invite you to allow the answer to be revealed to you like this. And maybe it already is revealed to you. You know that it's a right move when it is smooth, when you're not pushing it, when you're not trying to make it happen, when you're not trying to force it. If you have the perfect place lined up with the perfect lease lined up and the perfect situation landed on your lap and you're wondering whether or not it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do because it's all perfect. It all lines up for you. It's basically sometimes God just opens up a door and says, hey, let's go. And when a door is open like that, there's no effort because it's already open. You're not trying to pry the door open. You're not trying to jimmy the lock. You're not trying to go through all the keys and figure out which one's going to open a, open a door. It's just like, boom, hey, 
let's go. And a lot of times, especially when you're just starting out on your journey, especially when you're young, uh, a lot of times, it, I actually heard this and saw this demonstrated in the book, The Alchemist. If any of you guys get a chance to read The Alchemist, written by Paulo Coelho, turns out he's a Catholic, but he talks about a lot of new age stuff. Anyway, in his book, he says like, uh, you know, when you start out on your journey, God wants to give you a boost, just to sort of give you uh, a little bit of confidence. And so a bunch of things will line up for you right away. Now, it might sound like I'm saying only do things that show up easy, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying embark upon this journey if the door opens to it easily. It doesn't mean that the journey is going to be easy, right? But if the door opens, that means go. But then, like in The Alchemist, once that door opens and you go, then God starts testing you, right? If you're getting tested, if you're trying to break your way through the door, calling that a test, usually that's forcing it. You just trying to make something happen where nothing's supposed to happen. The challenges usually show up on the journey. That's why if you study like Joseph Campbell and the, and the, and the hero's journey, the call to adventure, what is that? A call. A call is like, you could hear it. It's very obvious. It's shouting at you. Come, go, right? That call is usually very evident. It's usually either like you're getting kicked, kicked out of the nest or God is saying, let's go. It depends on the person. Some people need to be pushed, <laughs> pushed out the nest. And some people just need a little hey, invitation. And it sounds to me like you're receiving an invitation. Number one, you got a good job. You can pay the bill. It sounds like you have a situation set up. You know you want to go there. You have all the, you have all the resources and you have the motivation, right? Like you, you don't want to live at home no more. And there's nothing wrong with living at home. I don't believe that this is the case for everybody. Some guys, they need to be at home a little bit longer. But it sounds like for you, it just, from what you're telling me here, it sounds like this is God saying, let's go. Let's go, bro. And the only thing that would hold you back is fear, right? Like if the door opens up and, you know, there, I saw this meme the other day uh, with this these birds in a cage. And the cage door was open. And one of the one of the birds flew out and the rest of the birds were staying in there. And he, and the other birds were like saying, look at that guy. He's making it so unsafe for the rest of us. Something like that. He's like, look at him out there being all unsafe while well, we're safe in here in our cage. But the door is wide open. And one of them was like, I'm out of here. The rest of them were like, we are safe. Uh, usually that's born out of fear. And so if you stay where you are. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just I'm being a mirror for you. I'm just putting up what you're putting out. Uh, if you stay where you are, it's probably because you're, because you're operating out of fear. Now, fear always likes to rationalize. I see you there, Sven. He says, yeah, it makes sense. As you said, I already think I have the answer. Guess I'm moving out soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course you're moving out, bro. There's no reason for you not to. If you were trying to make it happen, if you're trying to force it, uh, then I would say, okay, maybe slow down a little bit and allow it to come to you. But I think it's already come to you. Um, your, your whole concern about saving is, is not real. As you're making that up. And I understand because you're rationalizing, you know, uh, fear, fear works best uh, or, or, or is best supported when we rationalize, we make shit up. And um, I could tell you just from my own experience, right? Uh, and this is the way I, I learned this from my father. This is the way my father lives his life. And this is the way, I'm not saying it's the right way, but it's the way that he lives. And my father has a great life and the way he taught me. And he's like, my dad is almost like, a, he's, he's, uh, he's a little fanatical about this. He can't stand people that save. I know it's a little weird. And I don't totally 100% agree, but I'm happy that he taught me this. He says, I don't understand these people that save. What are you saving for when life is happening right now? And then he'll go through different examples of people that he knows that are like, they, their teeth is rotten, their car's falling apart, 
they're not eating good food and they're saving their money for what? For when they're old or for later. And then they, when they're old and, and they uh, are, are busted up and living a shitty life because all they did was save and they didn't take care of what was, what was important in the moment, then they got to spend all that money on that stuff. Yes, yeah, Sven. Sven says, yeah, I can't take the money to the grave. You can't take the money to the grave. Look, he, I know I'm not correct in saying this. In other words, I know there are people who will have arguments with me about this. But saving is like last. Saving is last. Saving is way down on the list. Living is, is present. Living is important. Living is imminent, right? If if you're going to stay at home and stifle your life so that you could save, so you're going to stay at home, uh, you're, you're sacrificing today for a figment of your imagination. There could be no tomorrow. That's another one from my dad. He's like, there could be no tomorrow. You saving for a tomorrow that may never come. I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> Don't take financial advice from me but this is what has worked for me. I don't save, my father never saved and I don't necessarily save. Uh, if there's excess, then there's a plan, right? And not, you gotta actually have excess for there to be a plan. Excess meaning like all of your needs are being met. And this is a need to live in your own, in your own space so that you can expand as a man. That's a, that's a necessity. I think it's a necessity. Um, I follow Dave Ramsey. I like Dave Ramsey's plan and you might want to follow his plan too. It's called baby steps, to financial freedom. And I, we've been doing this, you know, you guys maybe have heard my story about getting out of debt. You know, I was a hundred thousand dollars in debt and I built my business and, you know, I was broke. Well, I was able to do all that because I followed Dave Ramsey's baby steps. Here's, and I know I'm going a little bit off, you know, I'm giving you more than you asked for, but I just want to relay this because I think other guys will find this fascinating. Of course, Fan, you already have your answer and I think you knew your answer. Uh, check this out, all of you guys. I think this, if you're not, if you're not a financially minded savings guy, um, you know, there are guys that will know better than me. This is a, this is a nice little system for setting yourself up financially. Check this out. Okay. Let me share the screen and somebody's got their, their thing on, Jerron. Can you guys see that? So baby step one, what are their baby steps? Baby step one, save a thousand dollars for your starter emergency fund, right? Step two, pay off all of your debt except your house using this debt snowball. And you can look into that, what that means. It basically means pay off the smallest debt first and then start rolling that into bigger and bigger debts. Baby step three, so after you've paid off all your debts, except your house, that means student loans and all that shit, then you start saving a three to six month expense, uh, fully funded emergency fund. That's step three. So you wanna be able to have three to six months of living expenses. Then step four, so you've already saved, you know, you've saved a thousand dollars, just like in case the lights go out. Pay off all your debts, save six months. Number four, invest 15% of your income into retirement. So it's not until step four that you start saving for retirement, right? How many of you guys have a thousand dollars in a starter emergency fund, paid off all of your debt, have three to six months expenses in an emergency fund? Those are the first three things. Once those three things are done, then you start saving for retirement. Baby step five is pay off, is save for your college, your kid's college, which I'm not doing. I'm not paying for their college. Um, Six, step six is pay off your house. Step seven is build wealth and give. And that's when you really start investing in stuff. You become a philanthropist and an investor. And I'll tell you what, I'm not there yet. So that's all I can offer you guys. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness business and with women and if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together 
every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age is real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.